Hi, Mr. Mac. What's up, guys? It's your boy Who's Alex Mac and Dota. I got two amazing artists and producers, creatives, right here, man. You want to introduce yourself? Jay Rue and this bitch, man. You know what the fuck going on. You yeah. got my boy. Cash, you spit for you right now. Yeah, yeah. So, how, uh, how did, long have you guys known each other? How did you meet each other? What was the vibe? All right, we know each other. I'm going to let him say it a long time so I can correct him. For before. about four years. So, it's been about three years? Yeah. Probably about two and seven and, and seven quarters. Oh, three quarters. Fucker. You know what I'm <laughs> talking about. But either way I go, I met him like, what was it? It was right before my son was born. Or right, yeah, right before my son was born. Okay, crazy time, right? Yes, definitely, definitely. Was there like a specific moment or like, because I know like a lot of times you just be like, you meet somebody, you're like, oh, he was a cool person. And then like years go by or whatever. You're like, oh shit, what's up? Like, not, you're okay, so this this is what it was. So it was, I was smoking one of my homies that I knew at the time, right? And then um, he was like, bro, one of my friends is going to come smoke with us type shit. So I was like, all right, cool, cool. And I was like, all right, well, shit, how far is he? He was like, probably like 30 minutes. I was like, cool, we could just save a blunt for him whenever um, he get here and da 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 And then he got there and he was, uh, like, yeah, he was like, bro, <clears throat> he was like, bro, y'all niggas saved a blunt for me for real? He was like, y'all some real niggas. And then, <laughs> real and then ever yeah, since then, <laughs> we've been locked in, kid you not. Yeah, I remember that shit. I was like following along too because I'm like, damn, shit happen as soon as he said to save the blunt i was like oh yeah because that was real as hell like <laughs> them boys definitely could have smoked that shit so oh, yeah. that would be normal yeah. shit. and then the person that ended up connecting us we ended up like falling out not really necessarily falling Just out with him but yeah shit. it was like people go their own way in life so like shout out to him he know who he is but yeah. he an artist too um but yeah ever since then it was just kind of like I, I appreciate genuine energy so it was just like yeah bro genuine, he a genuine person and that's kind of like the real thing right like during this like spiritual journey that we call life sometimes you meet somebody you're like they're your boy they're your homie whatever type shit and then they introduce you to somebody else so you're just mutual friends type shit so it's kind of crazy how life kind of works like that right that's, yeah you end up being closer with somebody through somebody right than the person you was like the way I look at it, the way I look at it, if I would have never really even started rapping or nothing like that, I probably wouldn't know any of y'all. Like, that's really the biggest thing I take away from music is, like, if I literally would have never chose to, like, pick up that mic, what would my life be like? Like, a lot of great-ass people I didn't met. Like, I, lost, I met some great people today. I probably wouldn't have met if I didn't take that chance. So, yeah, it's dope to see, like, the longevity of it and, like you said, divine order. Because I feel like I was meant to help with my voice and deliver messages. So just the fact of that alone got me so much further than I expected to get. Just off that one like mission, it's crazy. It'll split into like so much other stuff. <clears throat> just take that chance. So for anybody who's like thinking about doing shows or like putting your face out there, networking, just go for it. Like no self doubt. That's I'm big on not doubting myself because you get further than you think you're gonna get when you do something like small you do baby steps then you'll get somewhere down the line oh shit you get somewhere down the line where you thought you was gonna go so yeah is that something that you've always lived with and believed or is that something that has grown as you've evolved as a person mm, that's a good question uh, i know for myself <clears throat> personally speaking like i've i've not always been the person I yeah i was just about to say like i it was like it's hard to answer that because I feel like certain shit be already inside us. We just doubt that it exists. Mm, so exactly. it'd be like, we already had the confidence, but we doubt that we had the confidence. So it felt like the confidence was non-existent because our brain can psych itself out because your brain doesn't know the difference between real life and like a thought, you know what I'm saying? So right, like, man. your thoughts create your reality. So if you don't think you have the capabilities, you ain't going to even look for them capabilities. So like, I feel like I wasn't always exhibiting that type of behavior but when I got older and just started experiencing not even when I got older just maturing in general because I matured younger in life like I'm only 22 I went through all my most of my shit like when I was a teenager and like it just crafted that mentality because it's like at the end of the day life's going to keep going you just got to make sure you adapt to whatever situations like throw at you because I feel like if your life boring that's because you was meant to have a stable but boring life. But if you got obstacles and all that stuff, you're obviously meant for something because it wouldn't be happening to you. It's meant for you to learn something. It's divine, it's divine timing, you know? It is. I don't so, know about you guys, but I kind of almost feel like in certain ways like we choose this life. Right? Like quite literally, you chose like as soon as you picked up the mic and started rapping, you're like, oh, my life just veered off this way where mm -hmm. maybe it would have been over here type shit. Maybe I still would have connected a couple of dots, but... 
Yeah, we still connect the dots because you can't like. I had a conversation with somebody about separating the artist from the art, and it's like you can, but to a certain extent, because like the art is influenced by the artist's living situation, like what they're going through and stuff like that. That influences the type of the caliber of music that they make, because. As you all know, like when people, when artists start to blow up more, usually their music start to like feel less authentic because they're now they rich and they made it. They can't have that same hunger as when they was in the trenches trying to make it. So I think that goes into that, like <clears throat> just different stages of your life bring out different energy. So it's kind of hard to like separate those two things. I feel like they're mutually exclusive. Like if, if somebody's really trying to pay their rent, you're going to hear it in every line. Now there are certain artists and I think those are the ones with longevity. Like they'll still give you that feeling, like they was sitting on that block still, mm -hmm. but they in the mansion now. So yeah. it's about that hunger and about that passion. Some yeah, it's about it the as, passion for yeah. real. It's about the passion for real. You can see who really was trying to be a rapper and who was just like, oh, I can rap because I can get paid off this. But even that's it's a like good who's business. Trying to be a rapper and who's like, bro, I don't know another way. Literally, that's me though. <laughs> that's me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you were just freestyling for it. That was probably. Up yeah, I was gonna say it took me at least ten minutes to make that beat, bro. And then you kept going after I just looped that shit. So like, yeah, yeah, I do. That I mean, shit. that that speaks, you know, speaks it's a volumes. therapy session type thing for me. Yeah. Speaking of therapy, is that something like from a personal development standpoint? Like, obviously, therapy. Like, if you go there, but like, what have you found to be maybe remedies for yourself? Because it feels like you guys both have like a more mature perspective on some of the shit that maybe you've gone through. Like you said, remedies kind of besides anyway. music. Yeah. Shit, um, books is a weed. podcast. I wouldn't even say that. Podcast. That's not like it's a own thing though. Like you gotta smoke weed while you're doing something important. Yeah. Or if, if not, then you're just fucking sitting around like everybody else. If yeah. they put the stigma on behind stoners and shit. You That's know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So like with me, like skateboarding is like one of the main reasons I even met bro because I was in Florida. I moved to Florida because of skateboarding. Then I met bro that I was talking about, and then we met each other. So it's just like. Anytime I feel like I'm down or some shit like that, shit, I go to the park, hop on my board, and just tune out, you know, zone out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't have that opportunity to do stuff like that, which, yeah, cause you to move down here just to have that freedom and that space to be able to, like, man. Because <clears throat> sometimes niggas can't sit down and write a song right and then their life be really hit. Like, facts. <laughs> Can't just be like, I'm like, oh, stupid. I be trying to like, do it still. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. I always gonna try it. You know, it just don't always go how you want it to go. Yeah. But Bang it. Bang sometimes you might end up sitting on something for like a few weeks and then you'll just wake up one day and be like, oh, nah, I got like 10 more bars to this shit that I've been sitting on with four bars on it. Like, it just be like that sometimes, bro. I think we got to give ourselves more grace as artists because I feel like we'd be like, running against an imaginary clock that don't exist yeah because it's that that clock that exists is like you on your own ass like you like bro hurry up and drop this shit hurry up and drop these visuals nobody's gonna beat your ass if you don't drop it by friday like you know what i'm saying yeah well psychology like psychologically you're gonna beat your own ass like, yeah you're exactly gonna, you're, you're the only it. person because we're still building fan bases and stuff like that we're still getting established so that's like the beauty of it i was just talking to um, that freedom. alicia earlier about that shit in them um because it's like it's beautiful that you don't have somebody demanding stuff because i notice a lot of the mainstream artists like they'll drop something and like they'll think they're giving their fans what they want and the fans will be like no this is horrible like scrap this whole like right. shit we ain't even want this like that's the crazy part, but when you're finding your niche and when you're finding your um, your target audience, it's easy for you to just experiment because they're going to soak up whatever because people are looking for new shit. So if you got something that sounds different, it really don't matter. Like, they're going to fuck Somebody in the world is going to fuck with that. Yeah. If you fucked with it, somebody else out there going to fuck with it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you, like, regard your own taste as, like, the standard right like obviously mm -hmm. i imagine most of us are making our taste like making stuff yeah that the we, stuff like, that we listen to it. yeah yeah like, that's oh, real i wonder if beethoven would fuck with this right? oh god nah because yeah. that's what i've been focusing on more recently is making shit that i could bump in the car like i usually focus on that but some shit be like deep and it'd be some shit that i like I'm, I'm trying to make shit that i could bump in the car with the homies right now currently that's the type of music i'm making right now currently it's just like it's either some deep relatable shit or it's some shit that's just like get your money up stay stay down you know and make sure you don't worry about the destination it's about the journey the journey is the okay. funnest part because when you i was just telling somebody this earlier when you get to the destination all you can do is look back on the journey the journey's done you know what i mean yeah good perspective 
in the past, all you can do is look forward. In the future, all you can do is look back. So the present moment is the best thing because yeah. you in that shit. So yeah, that's I also try to focus on staying present as well. Yeah, um, uh, I was just saying in uh, another conversation book that I'm reading right now is talking about how when you find that flow state, right? Like imagine you freestyling, you skateboarding, right? Where when you find that flow state, that's really you locked into that life. As Buddhists would say, like Nirvana, Christian religion. Yeah, religion that's a good Christ comparison. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, that's something that I mean, we were saying, like, where weed can be like a rudimentary, like, you know, like a hammer way of like finding it, right? Where it's like, you could do yoga, you could do a good workout, you could skateboard, you could do any of these type of things that you could maybe naturally find it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's a fleeting moment if you don't know how to like hold on to it. And that's yeah. why we see people like Buddha or Jesus or whoever like throughout like history where it's like, oh, they were able to grab an arrow to hold on to it for a minute. That's what I'm yeah. trying to find, right? Yeah. yeah. That's real. That's real as fuck. Exactly. I didn't even think about it like that. I didn't either until the book gave it to me like that. And I was just <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. You, just, you just like changed my perspective. Bro. The, reading is fundamental as fuck. Y'all go read you some books, bro. Thanks. What book was that? Uh, it was Russell Simmons. Do you? Um, it's just been my little like, cause I, yeah, he motivational as fuck now too. Yeah, like I'll be watching his Instagram and shit. So like, I fuck with that. Yeah, Russell Simmons. He's he's just got so much, and especially like he was there at the like dawn of it. You know, he's running yeah. the MC Beastie Boys, where it's like literally like the two groups that kind of like formed hip hop as we know it, like in the '90s at least, mm -hmm. or like '80s into the '90s. So mm -hmm. like, definitely, yeah. So. It's good to get perspective from those type of people. Is there people in your lives that you see kind of like in that like OG kind of lane, whether it's like tangible, you can see them, talk to them, or is it somebody like, you know, internet or just like that you're like, yo, I mess with this person. I try to learn from them. It doesn't yeah. have to be a music thing, you know? I feel that. I mean, I feel like I just, that's just me as a person. Like I learn from, from people's mistakes like you know some people learn from their own mistakes i'm more so like I, if i can analyze what you just did and then i see what you did right i could do what you did right and make sure i don't do what you did wrong as well yeah. you know what i'm saying so wise, man, yeah. yeah so that's pretty much what i do i'm more so of a learn from other people's mistakes type of guy so shit if, if like 50 cent like he reminds me heavily of my dad because mm -hmm. they was born the fucking i think they got the same birthday or some shit i don't know but they was both born in new york both came up selling drugs you know what i'm saying well at least from the story that we know about it so it's like when my dad wasn't there and there's just things that's smart about business that you know he might not have picked up on because he wasn't in business at the time i'm able to pick up on that certain mm -hmm. shit from 50 you know what i'm saying yeah, and then it's the same thing like observe like observing like other people that's doing music or fucking trying to get famous or trying to start a business or whatever, we could literally redo what they did instead of recreating the wheel. Like, we don't got to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So shit, just stick to the basics and we can make it somewhere. You know, that's so that's what I try to like focus on and shit right there. Yeah. I was saying, while you're thinking, I got two uh, jump frogs. That one made me think of like an old Jaden Smith quote that people were kind of like clowning on him about was like, life is about like that invisible staircase. Where it's like, we're all out here just trying to find our way, and then we step on something, and it lights up, right? And then it's like, so I'm not supposed to step on this step because somebody else stepped on it, and it lit up, but it's like, I can build off my next step. I don't have to go the exact same route. So exactly. maybe think of that. And then also with 50 Cent, that that man is quite prolific when it comes to giving game. He's got at least two books that I think I, both of them probably audible, audible books. Yeah, I, li I listened to one of them on Apple, on yeah. Apple. It was something about... Hustle or some shit. You know, yeah, so the, just, yeah, it was a growing hustle or something like yeah. that. That one was, um, yeah, I think that one was maybe more impactful for me than the 50th law that he did with Robert Greene. Well, yeah, that's, I haven't Robert seen Green Robert Greene. Robert Greene is a good-ass author, bro. Facts, yeah, facts. He'll put you on, yeah, just yeah. like from an observation um, standpoint. Spiritual Answers for Spiritual Problems, I think it's called. Or there's a spiritual answer for every, it's something like that. He has a book. I think that's him. That shit's good. Yeah, I fuck with David Green. Mm -hmm. I just heard that name. Excited because I was like, damn, that's a good author. I'm glad other niggas know about that. Um, <clears throat> me personally, I think my favorite books are 48 Laws of Power and The Art of War because it teaches you every single thing like that people do in everyday life. But it's like these these same principles have literally toppled like societies. You know what I mean? Like, and people be wondering why certain stuff happen in society, why the government do this and that, and that and this happen to them. And you literally read those books and you'll be like, oh shit, they've been playing me for a fucking movie the whole time. 
type shit though, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. They have been. They've been playing on the fact that you haven't read this shit. <laughs> Are you guys interested in history? Is that something that you yeah, I was. Into I was always. I always had a good grade in history class. I was very like well versed in history. Yeah, I, I was well versed in every. Person. I was well versed in every subject except for like math. Like, and then I got good at math like my senior year. I just didn't fit. Like, I had an attention problem, so it wasn't that I was not understanding it. Math I just requires, couldn't sit down and yeah. be like, "All right, let's do this." Because math be like, "Oh, you got to do it over here. You got to do it over there." Yeah, I said maybe even. But as when I got to right like now. my senior year, I was like, "All right, bet this shit ain't that hard." You just with math, you got to figure out like the secrets on how to do certain shit, like shortcuts and shit. Yeah. And you got to drill the fuck out of it. And that's mm-hmm. just like jujitsu or something. You just got to do the same move over and over yeah. again until you know it inside and out. Thanks. But. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm I'm more of an analytical person, so like that with history, it's never really been my thing because I've always just been like, why am I looking back on the past? Like now, I know you can learn a lot from shit that people like I was telling you, but I never thought about it that way. I just because a I lot just of shit they it. did, it was just exactly a lot of shit that was established back then is just recycled into newer forms. Yeah, facts. And you'd be like, oh shit, this is this era just repeated. Like yeah. we're living in the Roman Empire right now. Right. Right. Just see it, how, how you can the... how you can apply to like the the analysis that you get from what you're going through now to what was in the past to get ready for the future. Yeah, like you can do that with stocks, with mm-hmm. fucking your normal life, with fucking you know anything because you just got to compare the present to what was happening. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If shit get the lining up, then you Might know it's like going this. the same way. Yeah. This shit goes like cycles, right? Like, I feel like we know this is the same way that there's the fall season, summer, winter. Yeah, it's like the same thing with um, any type of, which is kind of, I wanted to see if you guys were kind of going to go down that rabbit hole, but like the whole idea of like, you know, history repeating itself and like, you know, the the buzzword that people be saying is like simulation type shit, right? That's like the modern day buzzword where it's like, you said the Roman Empire. We've gone through the Roman Empire, so we know what that looked like. Now we're kind of in this phase where it's like, oh, what's going on around? Is that stuff that you guys pay attention to, or do you try to kind of ignore some of that and focus on what's right in front of you? I mean, sometimes. So it's like you don't want to be too, like, oblivious to what's going on right in front of you, but it's like you don't want to be too indulged in that shit either. So, like, I know about certain shit that's going on, but I'm not just sitting there fucking watching podcasts or watching, you know what I'm saying, fucking documentaries about how this is what happened and this, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I need to get the knowledge that I got from it and move on. I don't need to dwell in the past. I need to learn from that shit. That's true. So that's kind of more so how I feel about that. And the best thing to do is really take action. You can't watch YouTube videos until you're just in a better position. All them videos are just teaching you how to do stuff. Like if you don't ever take action, it doesn't mean anything. You can watch all the podcasts you want to, read all the books you want to. If it's not applied, I literally put that in a song that I'm about to drop soon. If you don't ask me for advice, if you know you ain't gonna apply the shit. Mm. That's like YouTube University. Mm. And that's like YouTube University. It's like like you're gonna have that and then you're not gonna Mm. apply it. Yeah. People will sit there and watch, uh, fall down that rabbit hole and then just be depressed. That shit is depressing. Y'all's kind of speaking to me. Like, I be falling down rabbit holes sometimes. I feel like it takes me a little second to climb out of that bitch mentally, you know? It's just inescapable at a certain point, but it's like you got to stay grounded because at the end of the day, you can either be mad about the rules and sit up and complain and hope they change, or you can learn how to play by the rules and change the game from the inside, you know what I mean? That's I learned that shit from, like, Andrew Tate or some shit, but that's a real-ass state. Like, you got to play chess, not checkers. Facts. Because people... A lot of common people get mad at the people at the top because, oh, they ain't paying taxes or this and that. But it's like they just learn how to play the game better than you. And you're mad. Yeah. If you was on top, you'd be fucking them over too because you're on top. But the people at the bottom can't do nothing to get mad at the people at top until you become one of those people or you gradually start to build your way up there. Then you realize, oh, they're just picking the lesser of two evils. I have a little question, uh, piggybacking off of that, because for me, like, it's not even like I'd be mad about this shit, but for me, I'd just be so, like, uh, flabbergasted yeah, or something, awestruck. just, like, yeah. awestruck that, like, these things aren't more widely known, but then it's like, some people will know it, and it's just so, like, cavalier, like, whatever, right? And then other people... People are like, they're on some shit, like, oh, yeah, that's happening, but who's gonna pay my bills? Yeah, which is real. 
at the end of the day, right? Bill collector don't give a fuck if yeah. <laughs> this shit's happening so over and over. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as we were talking about earlier, good vibes. <laughs> Facts. But, <laughs> um, yeah. You definitely I, need to, like, focus up. Like, not, um, not be stuck in in the feelings that we're feeling at the time. Because that we, what we got to know is everybody goes through that shit. You know what I mean? <coughs> so like, right now I'm working on a clothing brand. I ain't gonna say the name yet because I ain't got all my shit in it. Yeah, yeah, but the whole point of it is like directed towards people who feel misunderstood. You know what I'm saying? So like, shit, we might feel misunderstood or like we're alone at that time. But then when you start to like take a step back and like really observe what's going on, you realize there's a lot of people out here going through the same shit. And like, yeah, you don't want to connect off the fact that you're going through something negative, but shit, that connection could help you and that person get through that negative start flourishing, you know, doing something positive. That's real. So, I mean, I know, like, there's the term trauma bond, but, like, that's... Yeah, that's all I was saying. Idea, you don't right? want to, you don't want to, like, trauma bond and keep yourself down. Yeah. But, like, you do want to connect with people that's going through the same things or in the same standpoint so you can elevate and help each other elevate. Yeah. You know? But it has to be equally worked at because some people yeah. will be comfortable with you because of the fact that you went through the same thing and y'all still trying to, like, cope with it and people will be okay with that and just leave you in that state and then when you start to realize it and like move on from it they might be like uncomfortable with it because it's like damn i thought we were still on this time and mm-hmm. it's like all right well now it's time to do this they're like i don't want to because it's unfamiliar that's real especially if the trauma is putting them in a state of like they go to certain things for comfort change we love that them. feedback yeah. You, right yeah so it's like dang like they ain't gonna be a lot of people not gonna fuck with that shit but that's why you gotta make sure I mean, trauma bonds aren't the worst thing ever, but it's like, you gotta make sure, like, that, right? like Cash said, y'all gotta get out of that shit together. Yeah. If niggas are just accepting the fact that, like, okay, cool, we're both... Bro, yeah, you don't want to be fucking crabs in the pot, bro. Don't yeah. be pulling your, don't be pulling your person down and then, you know, the next person... Are you person doing this or are you doing this? Exactly, right? exactly. So you need to, you know what I'm saying? Like I was saying at the beginning, focus up. Don't let them feelings control you because, shit, you could push past feelings. And create your fucking reality. Like you can make it happen for real. Yeah. Is there anything that you guys remember along the way that was like definitive that kind of put you on this path? Let's say, like I know we said, like the music, right? Is that as easy as just saying, like, oh, I start pursuing music and start pursuing whatever things that lead down this path? But like you know, in my head, I sit there, I wonder, I'm like, are these conversations that everybody's having, or is this conversations that artists, creatives, the people who sit silently and think about stuff? So I'm not going to say everybody has the conversations, but there are a lot of open-minded people that just don't like, speak their mind or like, you know, express the fact that they're open-minded. So you might feel like they just on some, like, you know, not understanding type shit, but you could have that conversation, and the next day, you know, you're like, damn, you're a bright-ass individual. You know what I'm saying? Like, some people just have that in them, and some people just go with the flow of whatever the fuck is going on right now. So, like you were saying with the society thing, do the motherfuckers, like, know what's going on in the news or know what's going on with the world, or they just on some shit, I gotta get my bills paid, and da 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 You know what I'm saying? Like, in the type shit. Exactly. Yeah. So, you just gotta know. Well, that's where the simulation comes into play. It's literally that because certain people will choose their simulated reality every single day. <laughs> and then there's people that can't do that because they feel like it's too much of a routine. Like they got to change one small thing. Like, you know, it's just that's what the simulation is. There's people who have consciousness and there's people who don't. Facts. But there's mm-hmm. definitely other people having these And then there's people that feel like they have consciousness but they fight against it and be like oh no i'm just having this i'm just hearing voice i'm just doing it that is for a reason everything's for a reason like for sure yeah so i feel like people just gotta the people who gravitate towards whatever need to stick together and their group can survive how they survive because i don't believe in like everybody coming together everybody's not gonna agree i believe in the people who agree with each other should be around each other and then the people who agree with the other ideals should be around each other everybody should just coexist in their respective beliefs but I don't know if everybody's going to come together in the end I don't believe in that I don't think we were meant to like there was always supposed to be contrast right yeah yeah, like, yeah. 
gotta, you gotta have, if you want good, you gotta have evil. Like, you know need some perspective on it. Yeah. Because you wouldn't really know what good is if you never knew what evil was. You know what I'm saying? Or vice versa. For real. So, like, you need, you need both of them. You, yeah. you, you need it. <laughs> I have uh, two questions in the back of my mind. Like, I thought, like, before, like, this whole night started, I was like, oh, I'm going to have, like, a handful of questions. I'm going to just be like, little singer buzzwords, right? <laughs> and again, was the Mike Tyson quote, right? So, uh, do we want to go deeper into this conversation, which, back of my mind, I got a question for that, or do we want to start pulling up for air right now? And I got another one, which is, like, a yeah, we can left turn. We can switch. Switch. Left turn. What are biggest red flags in a relationship? red flags um shit liars but i mean you don't always know they're a liar at the beginning but like if they learn about little shit to other people that you're around them so like shit if they say they five minutes away and they ain't left the house like little shit like that you know what i'm saying then you could be like all right this motherfucker might not be that's is that like is that number one of the red flags or is that like okay a couple other things add up to it then that equals really bad i mean like I feel like that's that's, that is one where it's like people sometimes feel the need to be like, damn, I was supposed to leave the crib five minutes ago. But then at the same time, it's like, why are you lying about this? What else are you lying about? Facts, facts, facts. You could have just told me I did not leave the house. Yeah, life happens. Like, I might be upset in the moment, but if we're people, we can get past this, right? Facts. I'd rather you be upset now while we're on the phone and I ain't left the house yet. (laughs) Get me getting all the way there. I'm not going to lie, just got to shout out. 20 minutes late. (laughs) You're like, bro, what the fuck? You were supposed to be here. Real shit, yeah. So I get that. Okay. That's up there. Is that number one? Do you have like a couple? Lying for like, me is number one just number because one. that's just how I grew up. That I'm makes a sense. very trustworthy person. So I like the people that I'm around to be trustworthy. So. Yeah. I get that. I mean, like uh, at that same time, it's like we're trying to be on the same level with some shit. If we're like hiding these different realities that we're like operating in, right? It's like, what are we even doing? Facts. Yeah. I was just saying this earlier. The red flag for me is if you're, if they say that I'm the first guy to treat them right. You don't believe that? No, no, no. I believe Damn. it, but it just it comes with a lot, bro. And like, nigga, don't be having the time. Like, maybe a lot of people gonna disagree with that, but I don't know. I just don't be feeling it because it's like, if it was the other way around, you're not gonna want to teach me how to be a man. Like, I'm gonna have to teach you how to be a woman in a relationship. That shit is just like, it takes a lot out of somebody trying to be there for themselves and fully be there. Like, you giving a hundred, a hundred. It's not fifty, fifty. Because they don't have enough for themselves, so you have to give them what you got, and you have to have enough for your le- yourself to keep giving to them. Because mm-hmm. if you run out, then they don't have no source of nothing, then they gonna start fighting with you because you don't have the energy that they require that you gave them in the beginning. Yeah. And sometimes people That's just nice. get sometimes people just get ran down. I think men don't they don't see Realize. it like that. Yeah, they don't mm-hmm. see it like that. They just think like niggas be feeling one way and feeling another the whole time. Like you really did everything you could. Then at the end where you gave everything you had to give, now nah, I don't got nothing left. So that's my biggest red flag. That's number one on the list. It's just like me being the first guy. Like if you had no stability before me, you're most likely not going to bring any stability. It's going to take a little time. I don't know if I got that <clears throat> time type shit, right? Facts. Yeah. Facts. It's not about the time. It's about the energy. Cause I, yeah. like, sometimes you'll witness yourself losing yourself in someone else's problems because you love them so much mm-hmm. and that shit ain't healthy because you literally lose sight of the shit that you're supposed to be doing like oh I'm supposed to be going to a job interview I'm supposed to be going to this dude that do hang out with my mom or like you know just shit that you had planned now you're subsiding it because oh well I love this person if I, if I say that I love them now that's all this entitlement and obligation Negativity is another one for me as well. Wow. Yeah. Like somebody, somebody that's somebody always, that's always negative. Black yeah. cloud just always like, coming bro. around them. Yeah. Like, bro, like, you made any reason for that to be, like, mm-hmm. something that ruined your day. Like, at this point, we <laughs> just did any reason. reason. <laughs> I fucking stubbed my toe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that hurt. That boy, hurts you know. like a bitch for 30 seconds. but <laughs> <laughs> For 30 seconds. So but after that, got we should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, uh, what you were saying was kind of popping in my mind was I'm not super well versed in the Bible. I'm definitely trying to, like, you know, they say whatever times we're in now, I'm trying to do my reading that I can. But that kind of reminded me of, like, being equally yoked with your partner, right? Or whatever that's What that you same. mean by that? So Y'all yeah, got to be cut from the same fabric or they're not going to understand where you're coming from. Yeah. And you're going to have to find equally, yourself constantly you know I mean? explaining their point of view to that person because they cannot fathom. Like what you used to say with that one person. Yes. Yeah. I got you. So, like, yeah, if you're with somebody who maybe also had... Interracial relationships is a perfect example. That is an interesting dynamic. Yeah. It's just a lot of... uh, It's 
specifically for people of color, it's just hard to explain that into words. You can't. <laughs> it's like, it's not always easy. You have partners sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys dabble, or I mean, like you know, we gotta talk too much deep, but like yeah. in that specific, I guess. Yeah, right? I, like, I like I like whatever. whatever yeah. Well, yeah. not not every single one of y'all, but like shit. Currently, you Indian yeah, and like, you good. A lot of the women. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But like currently, no. But I met so <laughs> I met one today. She kind of cool, so I might start fucking with her. But yeah. I mean, uh, um, should I step out? I was gonna say uh, we've been. This is longer than like most interviews. We're just flying. Like I imagine we could do like seventeen of these. Like you know what I mean? Facts. So shit, if you need us again, hey, Hello. you know I'm down. You already That's know. It's the man. first time I ever did an interview. Hmm? For first real? performance was the last time. So hey, Almost. for real, for we real. just doing a lot of firsts out here with my boy. You know what I'm saying? I love that man. That's what I'm here for. Like honestly, right. like I just wanna fucking. I know what's in my heart, and I know what Good I want to give to the world, and yeah. I know what. I know what can be, and it's like, it can be scary sometimes from both ways, right? It can be scary because of, like, what's the Coach Carter, right? We're not scared of what we're not, but we're scared of what we are capable type shit. Mm-hmm. There's also this, you know, just what is life sometimes type shit. Like, like, what, like what are you, you really saying, journey. about? The yeah. journey. But that's what, that's what it's all about. We're here for the journey. Right. These are the moments that make up the fucking mosaic picture that is our life at the end of the day, right? The little right. bits and pieces. So. You just got to keep going. There's going to be an unfinished picture. And that's it. Exactly. exactly. It can be an unfinished picture. We're like artists, sometimes we want to finish the shit, you want to like have it, but it's like, sometimes it's done before you think it's done, right? Facts, facts. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are still rapping right now that I can say it's done for them. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, you're 50, bro. Just, just go ahead and, you know, chill with your platinum plaques, bro. Like, yeah, get a nice residency <laughs> someplace, <laughs> right? Go chill with your kids, man. Yeah. I gotta well, on that stairs, note, yeah. I was gonna say, on that note, I love it. Just give you guys uh, a little shout out. Just so we can get a little official official. Oh yeah. J Root once again, man. Big ODM. No outsiders, man. Only the mob, no outsiders. We got Cash Shoes Biffy, man. Cash Shoes um, Biffy. We got a lot of shit on the way. Can't say too much, but we're dropping a new single soon called Green Light. It's already um we already got a reel up on Instagram. So yeah, go tap in with that. Like it, share it, let your people J A E R R U underscore on Instagram and Cash the number two. S P I F F Y. It's your boy. Yo, it's happening, man. Already heard it here. Alex Mack in the building. Whoa. Get out. Hey, Bresky.